Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Laszlo Cellini. I've been working for W from Bodies Eckendorf for more than two decades. I am going to talk about how can we meet the requirements of both quality and yield in winter wheat breeding. The problem is there is always a trade-off between yield and quality. You can see on this chart a very close negative relationship between protein content and yield. The higher the protein content, the lower the yield. There's a very huge diversity in bread styles in Europe. British leavened pan bread, French baguette, American burger, Italian pizza, and German soldo bread are the most important and famous bread styles but we have more than 3,000 bread styles in Europe. There is a very huge diversity in the Baltic states as well. Lithuanian table bread, Lithuanian potato bread, Latvian breads from Riga, the Latvian garlic bread, which doesn't really uh, belong to this assortment because this bread is made completely uh, from rye, but it's absolutely delicious and I wanted to uh, mention it. Estonian kringel, and Estonian sepik. Wheat quality can broadly be defined as the criteria that the wheat need to meet to be accepted for particular uh, end uses. Plant breeding is able to improve bread making quality. The most important breeding goals for quality are protein, Hagberg falling number, Hagberg falling number stability, sedimentation value, specific weight, water absorption, floor extract, loaf volume and quality group. However, varieties don't reach end users. Flour and dough are mixtures of several varieties on the same uh, protein level. End users and customers define very clearly their demands. Breeders can produce new varieties with desired quality attributes and the variety offices in each country can classify and describe these varieties very exactly. So the growers are able to deliver varieties with precisely defined attributes to handlers. However, the loads are tested only for protein contact because of the lack of time and because of the lack of suitable rapid test methods. The loads are segregated in four protein levels. Below 12.5% is feed, above 12.5% is export, above 3.5% is A-wheat, and above 14.5% is E-quality wheat. So that's the reason why end users' demands cannot be met precisely. That brings us back to our original question how can we meet the requirements of both yield and quality in winter wheat production? The key is the combination of using the right variety with suitable sites, optimal fertilization, and adapted crop rotation. You can see on this slide the performance of 191 European wheat varieties in three production intensity levels. These varieties were listed between 1966 and 2013. Older varieties are on the left side on the x-axis and younger varieties are on the right side. You can see a clear trend towards increasing yield at younger varieties in each intensity level. The same effect uh, can be observed if you compare high quality wheat varieties on different fertilization levels. Increasing fertilization levels make rise protein content in each variety. The reaction of loaf volume is not that clear. The loaf volume doesn't react to increasing fertilization levels in some varieties like Julius or Patras. Here is very important to know specific variety characteristics. The right variety is more important. The yield and protein content of wheat depend on the previous crop as well. 
The Bundesordnamt, the German variety office, carries out the Wertprüfung, the nationalist trials every year on almost 50 sites. Each site has a previous crop. So you can sort the sites uh, according to the previous crop. So you compare the performance of the wheat varieties depending on the previous crop. The most important previous crop in Germany are winter earthy grape, sugar beet, legumes, corn, and winter cereals. On the left side with the green bars, you can see the influence of the previous crop on the yield. You can reach 17 uh, decitons per hectare more wheat after legumes than after sugar beet. A very huge impact of the previous crop on the protein content is shown on the right side with the red bars. Almost 1% more protein you can achieve if you use winter earthseed rape or legumes as previous crop instead of corn. Rapur Baltic represents four German uh, cereal breeders in the Baltic states. Each breeder has a breeding center in Germany, in France and in the UK, but not in other European countries. Rapur Baltic takes care that all varieties can be distributed in these states. Here on this slide you can see our recent uh, assortment of winter wheat varieties. Some of them are well-known and established varieties such as Azkaban and Etana, and some of them are new. I'm going to present uh, these uh, varieties later. Rapur Baltic takes care that all varieties get popular. They put them in registration trials in each country or present them in partners' sites in each country. Debian, SU Willem, Maxus and Polar Cup completed the second year of registration trial in Lithuania. Debian was the highest yielding variety followed by SU Willem. Gerlach was in the nationalist trial one in Lithuania 2023 with the highest yield. The post registration trial is the most important trial in Germany. That's the first time freshly listed varieties can be compared with well-established important leading varieties. In this trial, or variety Excel was the highest yielding variety in the quality group E. WPB Newton was the highest yielding variety in the quality group A. And Debian was the highest yielding variety in the quality group B. But other varieties like SU Willem, Polar Cup, Ionte, SU Mangold and SU Fita performed auch very well. Another very important trial in Germany is the Bundesortenversuch. That's a countrywide trial where all candidates for listing can be tested. It's very important that the varieties show a very good uh, performance. Exile was the highest yielding variety in the E quality group in this trial as well. And SU Junta and WPB Newton were very good performing varieties in the quality group A. And SU Tamu and SU Shamal performed very well in the quality groups B and C. The year 2023 showed us how important the characteristic falling number can be. There is a chart with results of falling number over 70 years from several official trials. And uh, you can see uh, in this assortment of varieties, Polar Cup, Exile, SU Yonte, with very good falling number stability values. Finally, uh, I would like to show four of our most uh, important new varieties. Exile, bred by DSV, is a high yielding E quality variety. It's very early, has a very strong resistance against Fusarium and is uh, very uh, strem stable. SU Yonte is bred by WVB, is an E quality high yielding variety. It has a very high uh, nitrogen efficiency and a very high and stable falling number. SO Tamo is the earliest variety in our assortment, is a B quality wheat, has a special resistance against Pseudocercosporella and orange blossom midge. 
has a very high protein level and a high uh, nitrogen efficiency and a strong resistance against several leaf diseases. Esu magnetron is bred by Nordsat. It's a very high uh, quality A and E variety. It's very early, has a very high protein level and a very high uh, nitrogen efficiency. It has a high and stable falling number and a very strong resistance against several leaf diseases as well. Let me sum it up, please, for you. There is a trade-off between yield and quality in wheat production. The most important factor to meet combined requirements is the variety. Plant breeders provide a broad range of varieties for production of food and feed suitable for all geographic regions. Winter earth seed rape and especially legumes as a previous crop can contribute to a significant increase of yield and quality of wheat compared to winter cereals and corn. I hope I was able to show you some information which can help you to choose the right variety and optimize your production system. Thank you for your attention.